Kenobi's corner, Kenobi's corner, Kenobi's corner. Da-doom, doom, you know, remember that song? No. From the 90s. Can't uh-huh. stop the rock, can't stop the rock. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Was that 90s? I think it was like more 2000s, wasn't it? I don't know. That sounds more 2000s. It's got to be 2000s. I don't think so, man. I was in high school. Sing it to your phone. See if it tells you what it is. <laughs> you sing it to your phone. <laughs> no, you were just singing it right now. What's the problem? What's the difference? Just turn your phone on. Tell it, hey. It can hear me anyway, dude. <laughs> it's it's, it's listening. always listening, John. Don't you know this? Yeah, man, it's Google. I know this. <laughs> just like, what song was I, I singing a minute ago? <laughs> what song was I singing a minute ago? It starts playing it. <laughs> Did you mean this? <laughs> Tomorrow you're gonna get an ad like in your browser. This is the '90s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> get your 11 CDs set now. <laughs> it's gonna be an ad. How to stop rocks? <laughs> anyway. All right, man. Well, Take it off, man. I guess we'll never know when "Can't Stop the Rock" by Fatboy Slim came out. Welcome okay. to Kenobi's actual corner this time. Uh, I'm Eric. And this is Jonathan. Is this why you picked this spot to record? Dude, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> we are now recording out of a booth, like a legit booth. So we're actually in a corner this week. A yeah, and corner. the funny thing is, it's like it's not a recording booth mm-hmm. or a sound booth or a any of the booth. legitimate booths. It's just a booth. (laughs) Or a police booth, (laughs) if you are into the whole Doctor Who brevity thing. And who isn't? I mean... (laughs) Except for me. Um, You're the only one. You're the the one left. You're the holdout. I know, dude. Uh, when we went to Comic Con, there were so many Doctor Who Whovians there. It was awesome. It Doctor Whovians. <laughs> <laughs> just Whovians. <two> <laughs> yeah, just Whovians. Oh, okay. It's not a Doctor Whovians? Yes. Okay. Exactly. No Doctor Whovians. Just Whovians. <laughs> Mr. Doctor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, as always, we're here to talk to you about movies, comic books, uh, video games, and everything in between that we find interesting. And of course, the fantastical. <laughs> this week, John. Yes. Fantastical Beast. <laughs> Where to find them? We're seeing <laughs> it this weekend. Fantastical Beast. <laughs> so we haven't watched it yet. No. So we're not going to talk about it this episode, but mm-hmm. we'll talk about it next episode because we're going to watch it. Yeah. This weekend. Um, sometime. We'll, some hopefully sometime soon. You're going tonight? Tomorrow. I'm going tomorrow. Tomorrow. So I'll watch it. But did watch Arrival, so we'll talk about Arrival. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched it. Eric did not. I did not. We're still going full spoilers, but we're, we'll talk about it at the end of the episode. Mm-hmm. We'll give a little spoiler free, and then we'll go right into spoilers. Well, John, um, so give a little I'll spoiler free. It. I'll say what I saw in the trailers, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we'll take it from there. And then we'll go. Okay. Anyway, before that, we got Dude. some cool stuff that happened this week. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. Dude, let's just go with it, man. Rogue One. Um, ah. The new, I guess, featurette dropped for it. They did one for uh, episode seven and eight uh, when uh, filming first started. Yes. And this kind of feels late in the game. Like, we're almost to, almost uh, there. And they released this awesome, awesome featurette of... Um, well, they did one for this one, too. But this you, is yeah, like... Yeah, they did one like like a Star Wars celebration. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. So this is more like the rap party of... of um, Rogue One, and yeah. kind of gives a little bit more background. A whole lot of new scenes, yeah, and not a whole lot of new scenes. I, mean, I a guess few the, new scenes. I, I feel like there's. there's I'm a sorry, good, I'm watching uh, Felicity Jones. Okay, yeah. I'm distracted. <laughs> 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 man, you know what? I keep seeing her, and I know she was in Spider Man, but I still can't see Dude, her in Spider Man. You seem to watch that movie again. I think so. The I know you don't like it, but no, I, I like it. Was, you like was well she, enough. Was she in the Amazing ones or the original Tridge? No, 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 the new ones, the Amazing Spider Man. Oh, uh, the second part only. I think I don't think she was in the first. Mm. I'm pretty sure she was not in the first. Really? I'm like really almost sure she wasn't in the first. Uh. Was she in? Was she in part, one of those scenes where Electro is like singing? No, man. That's okay. the only scene you remember from that movie. That's yeah, why you don't remember her in the movie. I just, just, it just was so out of place, dude. Uh, you're just done with the movie. I think after I, that, I, I was. was. She's a uh, Osborne's secretary assistant. The dad or the son? The son. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, but I got anyway, to see it again. I got to see it again. You have to check it out again. Sure. But yeah, so the the feature, um, I, I feel like it it dropped a whole lot of new stuff. It, it gave a more explanation. Oh, and the director came out, and he was just like, if you have any doubts of when this movie is in the yeah. uh, uh, in the whole storyline. It's like right there. It is right there, right in the original uh, scroll for, uh, title scroll for uh, A New Hope. Uh Band of Rebels steals uh, Death Star plans. Bam. Done. And then they have them, and the movie's over. Yeah, and then that's it. <laughs> so it's 15 yeah. minutes. I think you know, it should be a good ride. <laughs> it's going to be in. Yeah. They're just going to hack it into yeah. <laughs> Death Star <laughs> Network, steal the plans, and then it's yeah. done. <laughs> it's like Death Star 1. <laughs> <laughs> that's when they had to, that's when they had to go like... Uh, <laughs> <and> upgrade <laughs> their security systems. You oh, know? yeah. Like, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's the second Death Star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you know a lot? They, they hired an IT tech party and, yeah. you know, like, really third, got things going. Yeah, third party, um, <laughs> you know, just to bring them in. Anyway. Uh, but, dude, yeah, the V-Chart looks amazing. Um, I, I can't wait for this movie. Uh, did we talk about the international trailer? I don't think we actually talked about the international trailer on the podcast itself. You know what? I don't think I watched the international trailer because... Oh, don't. And I heard it gave away, like, a, a major spoiler. Yeah. Yeah. I I almost, like, I had a... I didn't watch... I took me, like, three days to watch the international trailer because I was not. I was like, I'm done with trailers. I'm mm-hmm. done with everything until the movie comes out. And then everyone was like, dude, it's awesome. Like, the international trailer, like, just a couple of things that, like, really... Did some really cool stuff that's going to be out of the movie. And I was like, all right, whatever, man. Yeah. And now I hate my friend Sean for showing me the <laughs> damn international trailer. <laughs> because, dude, like, I don't know. It just spoils enough. It spoils enough. Like, mm-hmm. stuff that I think would have been cool to just see in the movie. Oh, yeah. And enjoy there, which is why, like, I just worn off trailers already. Yeah. And, I, dude, I, I watched it. And this is... As the feature that came out, I was like, oh, I want to watch this thing. And... It, I was really skeptical, but the fact that it was like, I don't know, I, I felt with what they've already released and what they've kind of doing for the American audience mm-hmm. was a little safer because I think yeah. they know we don't like a whole lot of spoilers. Yeah. Because um, apparently, I guess, international people don't mind that. Yeah. Like, um, well, I mean, because even, even with what happened at Celebration where they're talking about the characters, oh, it wasn't a big yeah. deal to talk about, like, what happens mm-hmm. um, kind of for their character in, and people, I mean, freaked out, like, they're you know, like, there was too many spoilers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, and that's, I mean, that's fine. Oh, well, you know, it happened. It I spoiled happens. things for mm-hmm. myself, but, uh, you're dude, about to spoil something for me. So I guess, you know, it is what it is. It, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's what happens sometimes. Sometimes when you should go watch a movie, when we're supposed to go watch a movie, mm-hmm. when it's homework for the podcast and you don't do it, things get spoiled. Hey, I mean, just well, saying life happens. Life happens. All right. Hey, we'll anyway, survive though. But so yeah, I, I watched it. I'm, I'm good. I'm going to try to stay away from everything else unless I'm, like, really confident it's not going to have anything to do with anything. Because we got, like, a month left, right? Dude, there's a while left, man. The 17th? Is that when it comes out? The 16th. 16th. That was close. Uh, yeah, dude. We still haven't bought tickets yet. I don't think they're available yet. Nope. Are oh, you we'll going to get the... Because uh, we usually go to Animal Draft House, and yeah, Animal yeah. Draft House usually does either posters or commemorative mugs or, or pint books. glasses or books. Uh, if they do that, are you going to go all out for this one? Um, probably not. No, no. After doing it for a couple of movies, mm-hmm. um, I was done with it because yeah. it's like, I mean, it's just a pint glass with the painting on it, and then mm-hmm. it's like twelve dollars now per Ooh. glass. They keep and the price keeps going up on them, so I'm like, yeah, eh, no, thank you. Yeah, like I can go to like Target or Walmart before. afterward. Yeah, exactly. Or like, go before, put it in your purse, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Bring it in with you. All the purses like, I carry around with me yeah. are perfect for that, Eric. <laughs> well, for all the Bluetooth headsets <laughs> that you have. <laughs> but right on. Um, the uh, uh, w- with the featurette that dropped there, also the VR experience. Oh that, yeah, that was out there too, dude. dude I think it was, was pretty cool. Really, really cool, man. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. The um, only okay, well, two complaints. One, I think I couldn't get the the quality, the video quality on my phone right. But two, uh, kind of sounded like Will Ferrell was our <laughs> was our pilot on that thing. <laughs> I wonder if it was. <laughs> I know that would have been really cool. Right? I haven't really paid attention to the voice actually. Yeah, I come to think of it. Now you got to go back and listen. You'll, you'll hear him. Dude, are you wearing overalls? I am. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, <laughs> I bought them for Wario <laughs> for our thing, and I was like, well, I got to wear them again. That's not going to be a one, one and done thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just noticed. <that> like, <laughs> so funny. Don't look familiar. Oh, you were like, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I saw the real. I saw the realization on your face. Oh, you look down. You're like, wait man. a minute. What's happening? Is oh this, wow, is, that's is awesome. This real life. Oh, that is real life. Okay. Anyway, yeah, back on topic. <laughs> <laughs> Will Ferrell was our X-wing pilot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I think he died anyway. So, <laughs> oh, I mean, well, if you haven't the, seen the it, that, that's pilot. A, spoilers, the, man. Yeah, oh, sorry. Definitely check it out. You die. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. If you got like a, a Google Cardboard or something to experience VR on, mm-hmm. um, it was pretty awesome. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't great quality on my phone, but. I don't know if it's just because my phone is not built for that kind of stuff. So there might be some other ones that look pretty cool. But um, Yeah, those iPhone 7s, they can't do a whole lot. Nah, man. <laughs> they work really well, though. They just can't do VR. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not what it, it's not what its intent is. Is it because it's a Google product, YouTube? I, I don't know. I don't know. Or Google Cardboard. No. I don't know. I just think, you know, I don't know. Anyway, that's going to start on a whole different tangent that we don't have time for, and yeah. it's not in the wheelhouse of this podcast. So <laughs> and we're won't be moving not on. in our wheelhouse segment either. Yeah. So. <laughs> we got a lot more to cover, so we're going to yeah. keep moving. We're going to go on right to Beauty and the Beast. Are you sure about that, man? Yeah, man. That's what oh, you have in there. Oh, damn it. I did put that in there. I way meant to talk about, because we were, I was talking about Star Wars, the oh. Han Solo casting. Oh, we can go to that instead. Um, yeah, man. Uh, what's your name? Amelia Clark? Of uh, Game of Thrones fame, yeah, uh, Mother of Dragons, yeah. Now in the uh, Han Solo movie, really, yeah. To join Donald Glover, who's playing a young uh, uh, Lando Calrissian, yes. And I don't know who's playing a young Wookiee, but apparently there's going to be a young Chewbacca in there as well. <laughs> well, young Chewbacca is the same as old Chewbacca. So, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? He's Those guys live to be like 600 years old. Okay, so. yeah, but he can still be a kid at one point in time, can't he? I don't oh, think well, he's actually, be a no, kid, no, though. no, you're right. Because <laughs> I was like, if 600 years old, uh, I don't think, uh, give or take 200 years here and there, or not even two, it was like 30 oh, years. Dude, yeah. It's yeah, like, I don't even know what I'm thinking. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. But, Anywho. I mean, he could be young, but I, I doubt he's going to be any smaller. Probably not, no. I mean, you're just going to say, like, oh, he's younger. Do you think younger. they're going to get, um, what's his name, the dude that, that did it in uh, episode seven? Who's, what's his name? The the tall guy the, who played him. The, not the original guy, right? Mm-mm. Not Peter Mayhew. Um, no. Dang it, I can't remember his name. I can't either. The but new he's guy pretty, doing it. Yeah, he's yeah I mean, he did a good too. job. You couldn't tell. I mean, to me, there wasn't a visible difference on yeah. scenes that he did compared to what Peter Mayhew did. Yeah. Um, or at least Chewbacca didn't feel any different than mm-hmm. than that right there. So, and I mean, it was a pretty good passing of the torch during that time anyway. So, yeah. I mean, I figure he's got to play him here and he's got to play him in the new one. Yeah. Just to kind of keep things consistent. And episode yeah. eight. Very That's true. what I mean by the new one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you clarify. see Benedict Cumberbatch do... Uh, a Chewbacca impression on he did it on the like some that English talk show. Uh, I don't know, but uh, Harrison Ford was there, and I don't know. It was during those times where when he was doing interviews, he was like very spry and very like alive. But like I guess he heard Benedict Cumberbatch do it, and his eyes just lit up, and he was like, "Oh my god!" You know, like he just sounded like right on. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. Cool. I didn't hear that. That's yeah. pretty cool, dude. Okay, I'll put it in there too. Um. Dude, okay, well... Okay, well, I mean, how, how go do you back feel to about the story it? that you uh, wanted to talk about. Well, no, no, just real quick, uh, with Amelia Clark, who, did they say who she's playing? She's just playing the female lead. She didn't, they didn't, uh, I don't like, think they... Like, they didn't say who it is? Yeah, maybe that's a spoiler. I mean, it can't be Princess Leia, so... What if it is? I mean... A young Princess Leia? Did it, why would they do that? I don't know. It's going to break all kinds of continuity. No, nah, I don't know. I'm, this I'm isn't just, the X-Men, dude. I'm just saying Like, things. they can't retcon something. <laughs> actually, it's, like, it's funny that you say that, because Brian Singer is actually going to be directing. No. I was like, dude. <laughs> don't you dare. <laughs> the, the look of terror in John's eyes. And <laughs> dude, I don't know. I really like Amelia Clark, man. I think she's... I don't know. I know a lot of people tended to disagree with me. Not disagree with me. Just didn't see eye to eye with me on... Uh, Terminator Genesis. Mm-hmm. I love that movie. Still. I still haven't seen it. It's still amazing to me. Um, but I thought she was really, really good in that movie. 
like really good. She's probably one of the reasons I like that movie so much. Um, not just because it's her acting in it, but mm-hmm. I think it took somebody who's a good actor to be able to pull off some of that stuff because it was not great or very well written. The movie points. itself wasn't great, but she was great in it. No. Okay. The movie itself wasn't she great, but she was made good that in movie it? great. Oh, whoa! That's yes. another type of uh... yeah. Like without her, if it would have been anybody else in that role, if Arnold hadn't come back, uh, even the main guy who I'm not a huge, huge fan of, um, Christian Bale. No, that's Salvation. That's Salvation. I can't remember this guy's name in the newest one. Anyway, if he if he hadn't been the lead for it, and and even though he's not one of my favorite actors, he did bring an element to it that was that was uh, like nice to see, mm-hmm. um, just because of role really called for it. He really needed a Terminator it up. Yes. Okay, right on. So, <laughs> if that's a term. But, I mean, it just brought all of it up. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just excited to see her in the movie. Like, I think she could be really, really, uh, like, an, uh, I don't know, an asset to that movie. She mm-hmm. can, showing a different level that I think is going to be better than. The way you had or emphasis like an on asset, movie. I'm pretty sure. Was she naked in this movie? Is that why? <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, is, that you, is that what you're telling me? Is now? she not naked in everything that she does? Oh, I thought okay. it was just so a, that's a confirmation. It was just a, a given. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't really see anything, but yeah. I mean, yeah, just silhouettes. I, don't know. I mean, just, um, whatevs, you know. Yeah, she'll be fully clothed and she acts well. Yeah. So oh, for sure, she'll be fully clothed in a Han Solo movie because it's a Disney product. now. It is a so. Disney product, so. Anyway, mm-hmm. that's that's totally fine, man. Speaking of Disney, uh, Mortal Kombat gets rebooted. Dude, don't you dare. <laughs> <sighs> you're segwaying, you're segwaying into something like that. You know what the heck we're talking about. Yeah. That's messed up, dude. Yeah. Anyway. No, uh, Beauty and the Beast, man. Beauty and the Beast. Uh, did you watch the trailer? Yes. I'm just wondering. Does the Pope shit in the woods? I don't know. Does he? Um, I think so. If- Nature calls. <laughs> Nature calls while he's in the woods. While he's in the woods. <laughs> oh, my overalls. Eggnog on my overalls. You got eggnog on your overalls. Yeah. You eggnogged your overalls. I eggnogged them up. Oh, well. That's what happens when you bring eggnog to a podcast recording. <laughs> That's true. And you wear overalls. That's just inevitable. <laughs> like the, 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 they're natural. They're in the woods. <laughs> they're natural enemies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna drink that anymore. Beauty and the Beast. Um, um, oh my goodness, Emma Watson. Yes. Yeah. Hermione Granger herself. Hermione Granger. I keep bringing bringing the magic to Beauty and the Beast. It's <laughs> <laughs> the sole reason the magic exists yeah. in this universe. Um, it looks really good, man. Yeah, dude. What, so we got our first real look at the Beast. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Um, I think it looks pretty legit, man. Um, I know th- that we were looking at a series that came out back in the. 90s i think it was like a beauty and the beast drama that uh had come out and it was it was kind of weird um super was everything weird? was super patrickal patrick what why was it weird uh, oh i don't know it, it just kind of seemed it was kind of like if it looked like a beauty and the beast drama show like if uh gray's anatomy was set in the in beauty and the beast oh maybe it was like an early once upon a time out ad- adaptation i know I, I didn't see that show but i know you liked it right i liked it i liked it well enough yeah. Uh, wasn't the best show, but oh, it had its moments. It had its moments, right on, dude. But I think the casting for Beauty and the Beast looks really legit. Uh, the voice actors. Uh, when I first saw Beauty and the Beast, the set pictures and everything for it, I didn't know that they had cast. Uh, what's uh, what's his name? Uh, Gaston's little lackey, dude. I don't know. I don't remember his name, but like in the cartoon, like a very goofy, like sidekicky guy. Yeah, you know. And I was like, dude, that really got like kind of looks like Josh Gad in real life. And then Josh Gad is actually him in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, you know what? I mean, I don't know if I like this or not. This one really seems like it's going to be a shot for shot remake. Yeah, of like um, the the original movie. Well, because they just did the Jungle Book. Did you see the Jungle Book? I watched the Jungle Book, yes. Well, uh, was it a shot for shot of Jungle no. Book? Um, no. It had a lot of the same themes mm-hmm. and uh, d- different things in there were a, a little bit closer. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of the songs, I think they redid like maybe two of the songs mm-hmm. um, that were in the original that really like, did almost they have came a whole exactly bunch of songs play. like the original? Or, or no. Really, no. The original, I think, was a lot more musical. Yeah. And, and this one was not nowhere near as much. Mm-hmm. Um, but. 
they changed, I don't know, they changed enough of it that it felt like it's like a, a different movie, like a definitely a different take on that original movie, like you would do an actual kind reboot. Of pay tribute to it, yes. but like was its own movie in its own, right? Yeah, yeah. I wonder if that's what they're going to do here too, because there's only, it only looks like, um, they do one song for sure, the Gaston song, song yes. and maybe they'll do Be Our Guest. Who knows? Uh, I mean... It's classic. It is a classic. But also, A Tale of Old Time is timeless. They're going to they're gonna do that one to you. <laughs> you feel sure. like it? Okay. Um, <laughs> but, um, I mean, looking at the trailers for the for Jungle Book compared to this trailer, they did the same thing where... They, they kind of show you the stuff. That's... They showed you, like, the almost scene-for-scene scene, uh, adaptation or reimagining of the the original uh, yeah. animation. Um, so it looks like, it. oh, well, maybe it is a, just a shot-for-shot, shot, you know? Yeah. But I think maybe once we see it, it'll be, uh, maybe we'll see it different. Dude, I'm watching, I'm, like, rewatching the trailer right now, <laughs> like, as we talk. Mm-hmm. And just without sound, mm-hmm. it really feels like it's just, like, somebody did live-action shots for the original yeah. movie. <laughs> like, Dude, watch the Jungle Book one, too, man. I swear. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, it's cool. I believe same. you. I'm not saying it's it's not... Not Don't accurate, you call me a liar, John. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, yeah, I, I'm just curious. I mean, I don't know if that's going to be necessarily a bad thing, you know? Like, sometimes mm-hmm. it's good. Like, it'll be awesome that they did that um, and just bring it to life and really give a new little look to it, mm-hmm. you know, even if it's not it, totally, completely different. But th- either way, I'm excited, man. Like, this is – it, it's cool. Adventures in the fantastical and the magical. Yes. And I really – you know, I, at Disney, man, like, yeah. well, what can you say about that? You know, like, we're watching everything else that's part of the Disney family, so yeah. might as well jump into this also. That's right. I totally forgot about that aspect. I mean, <laughs> we just watched Doctor Strange. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to go see Star Wars. Star Wars so, coming yeah, up. Might as well. <laughs> like, this is we're just completing, in it. It's completing the trifecta. That's you right. Know? <laughs> Star Wars, Marvel, and classic Disney. Yep. Yep. All right. Anyway, moving on. Um, Dude. You really didn't dig this, man? The Kong trailer that came out? No, I thought it was cool. But I feel... Okay, so King Kong trailer came out. Or yeah. not King Kong. Kong, Kong Skull Island. Skull Island. Mm-hmm. It looks okay. Mm-hmm. I got two big gripes with it. <laughs> One is I really think they're going to Godzilla us. I mean, it's legendary pictures also, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So both the same motion picture company. Same director? I don't think it's... The, I don't know if it's the same director or not. It might be because I think they were trying to unite the universes. Mm-hmm. But... Godzilla trailer, it felt like we got every single shot of Godzilla, how he was going to be in the movie, the fight scenes that were going to be in the, in the actual movie, and everything that happened, felt like we saw it all in the trailer. And I feel like that's exactly what's happening here. And in, in the that. effort to show us a good amount of King Kong to get us into the movie theater, mm-hmm. I think they've now shown us every single scene that King Kong is going to be in in the actual movie. Uh. And probably for the same length... <laughs> of time that oh it's going to be in the actual movie well, like Godzilla dude, was. I'm, I'm really hoping that they took like all that criticism from Godzilla and realized like hey like okay it's cool to have this backstory. You can't everything. call the movie Godzilla and only have him in 10 minutes of film. Well I mean they well no they didn't do that for Jurassic Park but I was going to say well because I was thinking about the CGI characters in Jurassic uh uh, Jurassic Park were like only in there for like eight or ten minutes or something, but then Which everything ones? else was practical effects. And the the original original movie? Yeah. Oh yeah, they had so many like dinosaurs in that movie. Yeah. I'll find the director. I'm gonna start rewatching the trailer. But dude, this trailer's good, man. I really like it. I like it too, man. I mean, just, just when I, I I was bringing it up, you're just like, oh, this guy. Well, dude, no, I, I explain exclaimed for that reason that i feel like we're getting all of king kong right now and that's gonna be it mm. like this is every single scene you know what no okay and then my second beef they still i don't think they've shown in, in either one of the trailers or clips or anything that they've released for this mm-hmm. i don't think brie larson has said a word so far oh, yeah. in this thing at all and i really feel i don't know if she would take the role i don't really know her that well. i don't know her personally i don't know her well enough outside of that to do any kind of comment but i don't think she would fall for a role that's mm-hmm. like you're there just to look pretty and be a female in this male dominated world mm-hmm. um or like you know if she's gonna have an actual good role to play in the movie right you know uh i'm she seems well, more than that Tom Hiddleston, but like i said i don't know anything 
Uh, it was more yeah. John Goodman that talks in L. O. Cool, no, L. O. Cool J. Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Or not Ella Cool J for Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, because I was trying to remember his middle initial there for a second, and then I just doubled <laughs> it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible, man. I, am, uh, I no, mean, man. John C. Riley talks a lot in this thing too. Which John I didn't. C. Riley. Oh yeah, that's right. The Are new you trailer. Kidding me? Yeah, the new trailer. That's right. Yeah, that's what we're talking about right now. I know Eric. we're talking. about Wake that. up! I know it's that eggnog. Buckle up those overalls. <laughs> <laughs> Get back in the game. Uh, <laughs> Get head in the game. I know, <laughs> dude. I didn't even know he was gonna be in this movie. He plays a legit scene, and I think he's definitely like the comic relief. Oh, he's easily the comic relief. Yeah. Easily, because he's all telling everybody, "Oh, you're gonna die. You're gonna die. You shouldn't have come here." <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell, I guess, his soldiers that they've like are soldiers for hire almost, mm-hmm. because it doesn't seem like they understand what he's actually saying. Mm-hmm. So maybe they just don't speak English or sure. something. But I just thought it was that was funny. Like he does a good job, man. Mm-hmm. I love I love the way he does his uh, his little scenes uh, for comedic relief in some of these movies. Yeah. Um, but dude, yeah, man. I, I, visually, the trailer looks awesome, which is why I'll go watch this movie. Um, yeah. Because I don't think there's gonna be any other reason. I don't think it's gonna have like really great plots or uh, uh, or plot elements or. Uh, I wonder. I wonder if they're gonna try to like link the movies together in some way. Which one? This and Godzilla. Yeah. I don't know, man. Is uh, this a period piece? This seems like it's a period piece, like it's set back uh, in the day. Yeah, because they're like bombing that island. Yeah. I don't mean the soldier uniforms that they have all seem yeah, to be like true. out of the seventies. Yeah, um, it could be. So I don't what know. What if man. they go the other way and like link it to Jurassic World or something? Why would they do that? <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird. Dude, you, just know, you know, what's funny? you know, you know, what's funny <laughs> is that we were talking about Godzilla, and I was just like, man, what else did this guy do? And he did like these two movies called Monsters, and um, it's like Monsters Attack, like South America or something, and it's like the story of people like walking through the the disaster and there was really oh, doesn't yeah, focus yeah. on the monsters right it's more on the people and that's yeah. exactly what godzilla was yeah and you know what that director's name is what is gareth it? edwards do you know what he's also directing what you know this, thing, I, this movie no oh i don't know <laughs> rogue one is he yeah is that guy <laughs> nice <laughs> right on so hopefully <laughs> it's not just well actually you know what this is a, a story too because i feel like uh the death star is like the big bad in it and it's more <laughs> of the story of the people around it trying to get away you know uh, the people around it and in this case in it in it yeah um but nice man that's, that's pretty cool yeah. anyway moving along because we got a lot to cover still. oh my gosh I, we're, we're not even nope Near the precipice. Yeah, we had there was a lot of stuff that came out this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ghost in the Shell, man. Let's, let's move there. Um, Dude, did you ever see the original anime? No, I did not. Did no? you? Um, I I feel like I watched some of it. Um, I might even have like a, a original like VHS of it somewhere. Um, and I know uh, Jose and his wife. They they have. I'm pretty sure at least a copy or two of it somewhere. Because really? uh, I knew. Like I remember, they they watched it with like way way before I did. I think man in high school they watched it, and I remember oh. them talking about it, and I remember seeing it, and uh, there at their house way back then. But um, uh, yeah, looks pretty legit, man. Yeah, dude, I don't have a ton to say about it because I didn't watch the original anime. Um, I wish I watched the more. trailer. Makes it look interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I like it. I didn't see anything wrong with the trailer. But I felt um, that way I about the Flux. About it. Like, <laughs> did you not like the movie, or did you like the movie? Um, it had its moments, but I think it was maybe too over the top. I like that movie a lot. Did you also like what's it, Ultraviolet? With uh, I don't remember if I watched that or not. I didn't watch it either. It was with Emilia Jolovich, like in a very Emilia Jolovich role, yeah, very Resident Evil esque. Yeah, I don't nah, remember I don't, seeing it, man. I didn't watch it either, so I don't even know why I brought it up. I don't uh, know why I brought it up either. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, Ghost of the Shell looks pretty legit. Um, I feel like, you know, she's definitely getting into all these, like, badass roles. Scar Jo. And Damn. Being Black Widow. Sad that she won't get her own movie. Sad, a solo movie. A Black Widow movie. But she has Lucy. She has this role. Did you watch Lucy? Uh, still haven't watched it yet. You, you wouldn't have put it in the same... 
sense of good things coming out. If oh, you okay. Seen the movie. Maybe that's why. No, I, I put it more like in like badass characters. Like, oh, okay. Like her kicking yeah, ass, taking you know names. What? Yeah, yeah. That was very good for that. Uh, mm-hmm. Very good action. Very good. Like uh, she's just good at her action roles. Yeah. You know, and and, and yes, like uh, like that one was very good for that, but it was a terrible movie. I think overall, in um, general, in generales. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah man this looks cool man like i said i don't know anything about it visuals already look pretty pretty awesome uh i think they're that's gonna be a highlight for me for this movie just because i don't know anything about it mm-hmm. um i may try to watch some of the anime before watching this movie just to mm-hmm. try to compare but um that's if i have time I don't know, when does yeah. this one come out uh pretty soon i think i didn't i didn't see the release date but if we do check it out we'll definitely talk about it for sure yeah and well, yeah uh, we put it, well, we just got a lot of stuff coming up. Maybe somebody can educate us on uh, the anime yeah, before, we, uh, before we uh, talk about it. Um, but, oh, yeah, so. let us know. Let us know. You guys let us know. If there's anybody listening out there. That knows. First of all, we love you. <laughs> Second of all, if you know about Ghost in the Shell, please <laughs> let us know what's up. <laughs> um, yeah. Dude, moving on. Moving on. Mortal Kombat, dude. The redo and a reboot. You know what I thought? Are you excited about it? Um, you sounded excited for half a second. Okay, I, I was, and I think I still am, just because uh, Legacy, the the whole YouTube web series that they did about oh, it, yes. was pretty damn legit. Like, that was really But is point. that going to have anything to do with the reboot that they're Who doing? Who the hell knows? Right? Because uh, if they use that as an inspiration point to what mm-hmm. this can be or how it's going to be, mm-hmm. dude, that would be amazing. Yeah. Well, really, really awesome because that yeah that that YouTube series that came out um freaking awesome man, yeah, man. like really I really think, good because they only had two seasons of it right uh I think so it's pretty legit though man uh, like super gritty like yeah you know kind of like the way the <laughs> the Power Rangers reboot trailer was <laughs> which is pretty I amazing. didn't really like that Power Rangers reboot uh, trailer though I know I, everybody I, you talked know that, about it like it's the greatest thing ever I did not like that that YouTube fan made power rangers one with uh starbuck mm-hmm. what's her name yeah do you remember her actual name? Remember name uh we're really bad at this sometimes we're on it today not so much today not so much maybe it's all this eggnog it is the eggnog <laughs> i blame it on the eggnog <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah anyway like uh, that one I, I didn't like i didn't it wasn't my cup of tea i don't like the way it was done for the characters and what that was but the mortal Kombat one definitely fit the characters it fit the world um, that that Mortal Kombat is meant to be set in, uh, dude. Man, I, I I really like that. I like that one a lot. I really hope it goes that way. But I mean, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if the world is ready for another Mortal Kombat movie. It's been a little while already, so I'll give it that. Yeah, they let it rest for a little bit. But ninety five was like when the original one came out. And man, yeah, I dude, really, I'm the original really, uh, one wasn't bad though. The original one was it had like it was so good much for prom- its time. Oh, for its time for sure. It was good for its time, but then it doesn't matter what time period you put annihilation. Annihilation, yeah, and, and it was, yeah. See, and that's what I mean. Is like you know, has the world had enough time since annihilation mm-hmm. to kind of forget, uh, forgive. Mm-hmm. And move on to like get ready for another Mortal Kombat movie. Yeah. I mean, the games are still super popular. Oh yeah, I you think, know. It's, and I think that's probably what the what the resurgence of like this movie is is probably based around is uh, the Legacy series, right? Had, like the positive response yeah. that it got from yeah. that, um, and that the 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 games themselves have been really waning, like around eight, like like from Ultimate yeah. after Ultimate was three. Uh, four five six seven eight and but then in nine like mortal kombat nine really like got a resurgence yeah i don't know what happened just the graphics got better and the gameplay was just overall better and then 10 when 10 came mkx came out man yeah. like yeah dude just so many people got back into in, it in my mind i correlated to gaming systems <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i think like what is it a super nintendo mm-hmm. when three came out um like around that time like everybody loved it because there still wasn't mm-hmm. there wasn't a ton of games like that and yeah what I think around that time, especially, you know, Super Nintendo era, um, the regular Nintendo era, mm-hmm. bringing games home that you could play in the arcade to play them on your home TV, like that set the world ablaze with some of this stuff, yeah. you know, like, and that's why they had, I think, such a big following from back in the day, because um, it was a game you played normally in the arcade that you can now play at home and still like really, really enjoy. 
I think what ends up happening is, is then after that, like it just, I mean, it's kind of the same thing over and over yeah. and they tried Oof. different things to make it, I guess, like not really just yeah. a fighting game. Yeah. And I think that's where it failed where they just concentrated so much on other things rather than the fighting aspects of it, that it really just kind of, it tended to die out a lot. Um, yeah. Like around, that was around that time, I remember like, I think it was like five and six, maybe. Oh got, yeah. Do you like got Xbox? Really, got really into like Xbox 360 era. Yeah. Like that, just kind of, when that came out, like they just started doing like, okay, like now that we have, have like the extra resolution now time to go like 3d environments uh not 3d like like well multi-dimensional environments like right, yeah. you can move around the ring not just side to side not like a side scroller but like actually in, interact with the environments and stuff and i think yeah. they just maybe well and they started to get into like story elements and stuff too like it which i mean it wasn't i don't know i i'm personally not a huge mortal Kombat buff i've played a lot of the games but just mm-hmm. because i i mean i enjoy playing it every once in a while mm-hmm. but I think that's what I like about the uh, the newer ones is you can just jump on and have a couple of fights real quick and then you're done like you're yeah. off. Um, but yeah, man, I, I really I, and I think it's done by the same studio, right? As uh, the DC one, Nether Realm. No, is it Nether Realm Studios is the one that produces the games? Are they also the ones that do? Oh man, the DC fighting game. Yeah, Injustice. Injustice. Yeah. So like, and I mean, you could, it's you could tell they're like borrowing mechanics from one another. Oh and, yeah, for and sure. I think that's part of what helped the resurgence too. You know, is like, you if you were to go out there and get injustice, uh, you can have the same feel, have the same kind of elements in a Mortal Kombat game if you go out and buy buy that Mortal Kombat game. So I think both of those elements really tended to help out. But I mean, I don't know, I don't know if that is going to help a movie out to be yeah. successful. Yeah. I mean, and I'll probably watch it. I mean. Yeah. I still I try to push annihilation out of my mind as much as possible, but <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows? Um, the director uh, Simon McQuaid, I think, is his name. Um, the uh, and he's just in talks with it right now, right? Uh, I think he actually signed on. Oh, really? Yeah, and mm. he's he's done. Uh, he, I think he did the commercials for like the Halo like uh the release of halo like anytime they do like the real life adaptations of halo commercials oh okay yes he's done done those so if he's done those and he knows kind of like how to add how to correlate the video game in the real life pretty well then because i really like those little commercials man i think other than playing the game itself those the marketing campaigns for that game are pretty damn amazing dude did he do the playstation commercial it says here that he did a PlayStation commercial, or the campaign overall for PlayStation commercial, the real life ones. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Um, where they were like just kind of like jumping from game to game. Oh yeah, dude, that was, that was a badass commercial. Yeah. Like I love that commercial. <laughs> That's probably one of the things that made me not regret buying a PlayStation so much yeah. because <laughs> of how much I, I was in the Xbox environment. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, man, like I think I think it'll be cool, man. I think he, he can bring some pretty cool stuff. And hopefully we can all someday forget about Annihilation and that it ever happened. Yeah, I hope so, too. Wipe it from existence. Yeah. Anyway, what else do we have to cover, man? Dude, well, a couple quick things. Spider-Man trailer. Just that it's going to be attached to Rogue One. Yes. We're going to see it. Don't know much about it. There's so many fake trailers out there. It's ridiculous. Dude. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I, I doubt they're going to do it like old school times where you'd have to go to the movie to watch the trailer for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels like every single trailer is coming out before it gets released to the theater. So, I'm mm-hmm. sure we'll get a, uh, some kind of trailer on the internet mm-hmm. maybe a couple of days before. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, if it doesn't get knows? leaked, if it doesn't get leaked, then we'll see. Yeah, that's true, too. You know. Um, which I'm hoping it doesn't. Like, I think it'd be cool to like actually go and see a trailer that I wasn't expecting there at the at, when we get to the movie theater. Well, now you're expecting it. It'll just be the first time you see it. You're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're the one who puts the article <laughs> that, on our uh, show notes. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't blame me. I should me. have even done it better. So maybe we should have talked about it right after. But no, nah, man, we're moving on. We're moving on already. All right. Well. So, um, <laughs> And this last one, uh, I just saw it the other day, or yesterday, and uh, I thought it was amazing. Uh, so we, we were talking about Guardians. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Not Guardians yeah. of the Soviet Union. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of the Soviet Republic, whatever it is. Uh, but uh, James Gunn uh, has said, like, hey, there's still, like, a huge Easter egg that's out there that nobody's ever caught. And he's like, there's a few things, but there's just one that's huge. And um, somebody tweeted at him, no, James Gunn's, like, the largest troll ever. Like, 
there's nothing in there. That's that's what the Easter egg is there. It's it's, it's no Easter egg. So he tweeted at him, "It's there. If it's not there, I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars, and I'll make this tweet like the like the legal agreement for this." And so I think news stories got that and <laughs> repurposed it to say like, "If you find a Easter egg, James Gunn said he's going to give you a hundred thousand dollars." <laughs> <laughs> which is not what he said at all <laughs> not at all and so like I, when i saw the tweet from him i told john i was like hey like i bet you by the end of the day somebody's gonna someone's gonna find this thing and uh he said no he's like it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit I, I, he's like i don't know when it's gonna come out but it, it'll come out for sure um but within i don't know three hours four hours james gunn retweeted it It was pretty quick he was like that's not what i said at all i said if it's not there then i'll give this guy a hundred (laughs) thousand dollars i didn't say i'm not gonna (laughs) give anybody a thousand (laughs) so i just thought it was amazing he's like duh he's like this is haunting me already uh so i just thought it was pretty funny yeah man so who knows? Uh, I'm curious to see like if anybody will ever confirm what that Easter egg was. I know, man. Like, what else is there? Like, I don't know. But th- then it it could be about anything. It could be him referencing something else, you know, in another movie. It doesn't have to be in the whole Guardians realm. It could be just him like referencing a movie that he really liked, um, or an actor like Michael Rooker. Like Michael Rooker, he really likes him. And so yeah. I don't know if it's like men- mentioning something that he's been in, you know, or I'm gonna. I've seen this movie a lot. Mm-hmm. A lot. Yeah. And I haven't noticed anything. But now I feel like I need to go walk home and watch it again just to see if I can find out where the hell this Easter egg is. That's true. Do it. Oh, well. Find we'll it figure out. it out. Do it. Someday. Someday we'll know. Yeah. Well, uh, last thing. Last thing, man. So. Moving on to the potatoes because Eric didn't bring the meat. <laughs> I bring it every time. Don't you forget about it. Um. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you did bring the meat today because uh, you brought the kalachis. Ooh, uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the way you're associating things there. Uh, yeah. Um, so, Arrival, you saw it. You Dude, watched it. I synced it. Uh, it had 100% on Rotten Tomatoes for about a couple days. Um, not anymore. Not in a mole. What'd you think? The movie was good. The movie was good. Uh, paint me a word picture. I, paint you a word picture. <laughs> okay. So... We, okay, we're going to talk not spoilers right now, just because we want to give people a chance to watch it. If you haven't seen it, feel free to listen in for a little bit. Feel free to tune out now. I'll say spoilers when we're getting into actual spoilers that are going to I've really ruin this out. movie. Um, so Eric's <laughs> leaving now. Um, but it's it just got so many different elements. Okay, um, first thing that I do want to say about it, if you haven't watched it, kind of a warning. For those of you who have watched it, maybe you'll agree with me on this point, where... The trailers and the way everything's set up for the movie is a little misleading, just slightly, because I think if you really go back and watch the trailers, it really does show a good amount of, like, this is a story about the characters, not a story of aliens or alien invasion. Mm. Um, It really is meant to be about the characters and then in the end kind of make you think about stuff, more like a, a humanity introspective kind of thing. Not a, this is a giant war kind of thing. It's like, um, aliens are invading. Here's a mirror. Look at yourself. Right. So oh. more, more. well, even then, it's, it's more ex machina oh. than it is uh, Independence Day. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That's a good like, correlation. I, I say that not having seen the movie, so you could be totally off, and I don't know. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to agree with you so far. So, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for agreeing with me. Yeah, man. I'm <laughs> pointing. <laughs> But dude, it, it's really good, man. Uh, acting in it is, is is really really well done. I mean, as you've seen in the trailers, um, you know, aliens come down. They uh, are in these giant pods that are set up all over the world, and they're trying to figure out how to communicate with these people. Um, and that's uh, Amy Adams' character on it. Uh, she really, uh, she's a, a language professor. Uh, she's done work for the government before, and that's why she gets recruited. Again, minor, minor spoilers. That's all that is. Uh, nothing, anything crazy or anything like that. Not ruining any part of the movie. Um, but that's basically why she gets recruited and why she's on the team. Uh, Jeremy Renner's character is a mathematician. Um, so he's kind of bringing another aspect to it for communication, uh, right? So you think, I mean, if you think about even all over the earth, one of the, the universal language between every single culture and people of the earth is math. 
like math is just universal it's everywhere Mm -hmm. uh and that's why you know he's brought on the team to kind of help bring that element of it um but dude it's really um it's a really good movie and i see why some people are really freaking out about it if you've seen any kind of hype kind of about the uh about the movie itself a lot of people were saying like they're it's really kind of blowing their minds of like how things are happening or what the actual movie ends up becoming about and things like that. I, I don't see it. I, I want to be part of that, but I guess because I've seen so much sci-fi, so much uh, like fantasy type stuff, uh, I, I really live in that culture that to me, it's not anything new or not any new concepts that are being presented uh, for the movie. Mm. Um, I, I think it's, it's really well done. I really enjoy the movie, but it's, it's not like, when I first watched, uh, oh my God, I see dead people. Am I Shyamalan? Oh, Sixth Sense. Sixth Sense. That movie blew my mind. I was like, what the what hell? About, what about contact? people are saying? What about like contact? Do you think it's like in that same or no? As far as like action and stuff is concerned, I think it's probably about the same. Oh, okay. But I don't know. For me, my contact didn't really have like a mind blowing moment. Yeah, uh, more of a. Like a slight twist, but mm-hmm. yeah. It was more uh, introspective than anything else. Yes. It was like yeah, a that's a good comparison, actually. Commentary on on life and belief more than Alien Invasion. And maybe that's why like this movie wasn't released early in the summer with the other blockbusters, because it's not a summer blockbuster type movie. It's, no. Yeah. It's, it's more of a, a think piece. It, it is. It is. Um, and, but, but I mean, it's still really good, man. I still really enjoyed the movie. I still would recommend everybody go watch this movie. Like, if you get the opportunity, I don't, because it's, it's lacking in action, mm-hmm. um, you know, I don't know. For me, going to the movie theaters and seeing a movie, there's got to be a reason to have to see it on the big screen. There's got to be a reason to, to have to spend some money to go see it outside of the comfort of your own home. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's totally fine. Like, I, I don't mind that at all. If you want to go see a movie like this in the theater, like go do it. And I'm not going to tell you not to do that. For me, this is not the typical kind of movie that I would go watch in the movie theater. Mm-hmm. But if you don't want the movie spoiled for you before like getting it a chance to, because I, I would fear that because people have watched this movie, as soon as they start doing any kind of trailers for like home release or, you know, DVD, Blu-ray, um, that it'll start spoiling stuff a little more yeah. than, than what it is. So try to get the more actiony scenes in there just so right. they tell you seem like it's a movie that it's not well all right man well it's um, definitely a for c a yes go yes. check it out yes go check so, it out so spoilery version time spoilery I'm version here, time i'm with it just let it out Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i'm gonna spend half this uh this review talking to you about what the heck the movie is <laughs> okay well, well okay you don't got to go too in depth because i'm definitely gonna watch it still but like spoilery but you got to go in depth because of what the explanation is okay so yeah spoilers coming up right here final warning uh everything else from here on is definitely to spoil some elements of the movie first thing amy adams dead no okay <laughs> but you're close <laughs> <laughs> jeremy Renner's is dead <laughs> no okay <laughs> we all die. but they do do some elements of mind trippiness um, where they kind of fool you into, because of the way you're presented information, mm-hmm. it's meant to trick you. It's meant to fool you. It's they purposely do things out of order for the simple aspect because of of, and I think that's why people were like, "What mind blown!" Like because mm-hmm. they they actually got you to believe and buy into some things before the movie even gets kicked off. Really, so they um, oceans eleven me. No. <laughs> <laughs> the movie starts off and it's uh amy adams and her daughter and they show you scenes from her birth they show you scenes of when she's a little girl they show you scenes of uh and sorry amy adams daughter oh, okay. um so you know amy, amy adams and her daughter when it's a baby like right after she's born mm-hmm. um we you know when her with her daughter while she's young her and her daughter as they kind of get into that teenage phase mm-hmm. um and then when she gets, I'm assuming it's like a little older teenager. Um, and it seems like she comes up, she has some kind of illness, mm. right? Like, I don't know if it's like cancer or what. It's what it makes it seem like. And then she passes away. Like, and that's all within the first like 10 minutes of the movie. Oh, so All they, up style. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then boom, like she's gone. Uh, then they cut right over to Amy Adams teaching at the university. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then like, you know, 
immediately alien ships start showing up and stuff like that. They get right into that part of it. Um, they go through the whole aspect of the language, right? She's trying to break mm-hmm. down language. She's um, trying to figure out how they communicate. They're bring her on to try to get her to communicate as a, uh, you know, over language, over spoken word. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously that's not going to happen because of the way they talk and we don't actually know, or as humans, we don't know if they're actually even saying words and not just making noises. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she develops a way to talk to them over written language by presenting them with written language first, then kind of, you know, learning how they do it. Um, and mm-hmm. it, it's pretty cool, man. Like that element of it, um, it really gets you thinking of like how, how to perceive language and how to, you know, the way they do it, the way they try to decode it. Um, the circles, I don't know if you've seen, like, I mean, we sit, you know, you've seen in the trailers how they, mm-hmm. um, do the, uh, the actual, uh, language in a circle. Mm-hmm. Well, they're like formulating entire sentences in that circle. Oh, wow. And, uh, it's because they're saying different parts of it or different things in parts of the circle. Um, but the way they see it compared to how we see it, see things is that, uh, you know, we formulate a sentence and it's got, you know, objects within it and we're very linear with our language, right? Like we Mm -hmm. write out a sentence and you're supposed to read English, you know, left to right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you read other languages in a certain order, but they're meant to be coherent thoughts in a particular order that things Mm -hmm. happen. Well, their language, it's in a circle because it's continuous and their speech or their, their patterns in the language itself in the written part, um, Mm -hmm. different parts of it can happen at different points. So it's just words. And then you kind of have to formulate what's, what comes out of it because they don't see it as a, this is the beginning of a sentence. This is the Mm -hmm. end of a sentence. This is all just the words I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Like the way they get into that. Um, the whole time that's happening, there's elements of, I guess, like bigotry toward them, toward the aliens. Like there's two different camps of it, right? Mm-hmm. People that think that they're here to help, trying to just figure out what's going on, um, you know, being really passive about it, uh, you know, kind of well, let's wait and see what happens. Let's try to be friendly. Let's mm-hmm. extend a, a hand. And then there's the other part of it where they're really trying to um, destroy them. or Yes. Or like really trying to mess them up. Um as things advance, as we start to learn language, as Amy Adams starts to figure things out, they start, or she starts, I guess, having flashbacks to her daughter mm-hmm. to see what, or like to, to help figure out some stuff. Like she's mm-hmm. all of a sudden piecing things together because of the conversations that they've had. This is kind of one of my criticisms of it. <laughs> as it keeps moving along, I don't know if maybe because I've seen elements of this in other, in other things, I really felt like I kind of started figuring things out. Like at that point, Mm -hmm. like halfway through the movie, I was like, wait a minute. Like it it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Everything's correlating too nicely. Yeah. Like it, it, it fits together so, so well that it's, it doesn't seem right. It moves along a little further. They start talking about how language, their language itself, uh, not only is like how they speak, but they write it that way because that's also how they perceive time. So it's all continuous. It's all one thing. There's no particular moment that's stuck and nonlinear. This is, this is a major spoiler, man. I'm sorry. I'm ruining it for you here. But at that point, like I completely figured out what was going on. And that's that Amy Adams isn't having flashbacks. She's seeing things and interacting with her other parts of her life in that timeline. Her And I, I was like, dude, I mean, it just clicked all of a sudden. I was like, dude, she hasn't even had her daughter yet. Oh, wow. This is all happening before her daughter. Her daughter. Oh, wow. Crazy. We saw the beginning. The, what we saw at the beginning was actually what happens in the end. I mean, it just, it just clicked. And after that moment, it, it didn't take me out of the movie, but I was like, okay, I kind of, I know where this is going. And, and do, but I mean, still like that, that was like props to the filmmakers for doing it that way. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it, and it's a really, it's an intentional trick to try to get you to think like, oh damn, like how's this happening or, or why is this happening this way? Or, or do you already start to feel something for the character too? That mm-hmm. really hasn't occurred yet. And they, they did a good job with that. I mean, I, I can't fault them for that. Um, I mean, I'm obviously not a filmmaker. I don't know if I could do any better than that to try to present this kind of uh, uh, thing. But um, I, I really, I mean, it was cool. But it, for me, it wasn't like, oh, my God, like mind blown. This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And I think a big part of that is my Whovian-ness. <laughs> like time is wibbly wobbly yes do you eric you surprise me every time man how much doctor who knowledge you have and you've never watched the show really no right um, i surprise myself because because 
time is a giant ball of wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I don't know, man. Doctor Who's really taught me to see like time as as really non linear, man. Like that time is happening consistently everywhere all at once. And uh, and dude, it, it, I think that unlocked the movie for me way before it, it did for a lot of other people. Um, and still, man, some people are like super, super impressed with the concept, super impressed with the way it, everything happens and the way it all plays out. Dude, it's, it is, it is it is a feat and it is, and it is you know, impressive even then. Um, and I'm not going to say it's bad or makes the movie bad by any means because this movie is really awesome. Um, yeah. Just not as mind blowy as, to me, as other people have made it out to be. Yeah. I, I like the other movies that this director did too. So. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And I mean, in the end, it's all like that thing. And, and what ends up happening is that, I mean, you've now seen the beginning of it, right? So, you know, she's kind of being presented with certain elements of this thing because as the movies progress, they're showing that she's flashing forward and having, you know, living in the future and the present and the past all at once. And you realize that she knows now her daughter's going to die before her daughter's even been born. And it becomes of like, and, and they even say it in the movie itself, um, you know, so as they're doing that, they present the question, like, if you knew things were going to turn out poorly in the end, you know, would you still go on that same path mm-hmm. of, uh, of doing the same, same, taking the same actions, taking the same course that you would have, you know? And so it's a matter of like, well, dude, if everything ends up bad in the end, like, isn't life then about the journey, yeah. you know? So, like, ha- what it took to get there, like, how you got there is is just as good as what the end result is or not brought down by what the end result is. And and that's one of the things, like, why I say it's more of an introspective movie, more of a make-you-think movie. But super I, I, interesting, interesting enough. Yeah. Um, like I said, Doctor Who spoiled this movie for me. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's why I can't watch Doctor Who, man. It's man, what a man. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to think about that they had this concept mm-hmm. before this movie had it and people were freaking out about it. So, I mean, I don't know, man. It's really, really, really good movie. I can't emphasize that point enough because I think when I start talking about the fact that, like, oh, uh, kind of predictable or, mm-hmm. you know, if you've seen this or that, like, it, you get it. Yeah. Like, without the mind-blowy effect, but mm-hmm. you still, like, to me, still... Yeah. Really good movie. Um, so it's kind of like this conversation now. Like, just because I'm going to go see the movie, maybe I'm having thoughts before I saw the movie and then afterward as well. Yeah. So who knows? Who knows? Who maybe knows? Maybe you just relive in this moment after you've watched the movie. Uh, no, but I'm obviously like, not because you don't know what the hell is going on. That's true. <laughs> it can be both. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I mean, mean, well, I definitely, I definitely want to check it out. So I yeah. think hopefully, hopefully we get to see it this weekend. Um, if not then over thanksgiving break because i say break but we get a two days off so are you gonna come in on friday yes i'll be here friday you'll be here i won't I'll take the day. <sighs> sorry man maybe we'll see it on thursday night or something thanksgiving is probably like one of the busiest nights of the year for movie theaters is it really yeah thanksgiving and christmas on it's the day like christmas day thanksgiving night i think because you right. already had dinner with the fam and Maybe you've already taken a nap. It's, you have dinner with the fam. You've taken a nap. Like, you want to get else? away from them yeah. for a little bit. Or, like, you want to spend time with them, but not really spend time with them. So you can go to a movie and kind of hang with out with them. But, I mean, you're watching the movie. That's true. I mean, Rival would be a good one to watch at that point. Um, especially if they haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, just don't spoil it for them. Okay. <laughs> well, I won't tell them anything. Spoilers, like John told me, spoilers. Well, I mean, that's what happens, dude, when you're supposed to watch a movie and you didn't. But okay, hey. Dude, yeah, those it happens. <laughs> movie's really good, man. Uh, I, I really, I, I like it. I like that they did some of those elements. I like that they tried to tackle some of those elements. I like that they did a good job of creating tension with those people who are the group that's like, okay, attack them before they attack us. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they kind of leave it open so you could not only think a little bit more about introspectively, uh, you know, those kind of things, but also kind of thinking about what the aliens are then trying to accomplish by coming here and showing us some of this stuff. I'm sorry, man, more spoilers, but the end of, (laughs) at the end of everything, they kind of leave it as they need humanity's help. And that's the whole reason they've come down. Mm. They know already that they're going to need humanity's help. So they're coming to present some of this stuff. Um, and, And that's why like the whole thing ends up happening, but that's why they arrive. Yes. So, but I mean, it leaves, I mean, they don't, expand any further than that like that's all you get out of that storyline i don't know if i was a little disappointed with that especially if they don't make anything else 
uh, on this movie. And it really, it, it'd be tough to make another movie like on this because they've already said what the concept of everything is, right? Like they've already presented what the main spoiler and shock and awe effect of some of these elements. And then they just kind of leave that one open or leave it open so much that it's just really speculative on anything else that can happen. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm wondering if they can just take that back a little bit or if they'll expand on it outside of a movie. Cause I, I don't know. I don't see them doing a sequel to this, but maybe I can see them going like, well, we think this is what's going to happen or something like that. And if they don't, I mean, oh, well, like it's just the lost point element, but a plot element, but it would have been nice to, for, to them to have some resolution to that. If they're never going to touch this again. Yeah. Um, but I mean, oh, well it happens. Maybe Charlie Sheen will be in a second one. No, please. Oh, yeah, no. (laughs) He's done, man. Okay. (laughs) All right, anyway. Well, well, I think that's it, man. Too much eggnog, dude. Too much eggnog. You got to go take a nap. No, I can't. Got so much shit to do. (laughs) Saturday stuff. Saturday, man. That's what happens when we record on a Saturday. Yeah, and then I'm on call today, too, or this weekend, too. So That's what happens, man. Work. Work for work. Work for not work. All on a Saturday. Yep. And on that note... We've been Kenobi's Corner. You can find us on soundcloud.com uh, slash Kenobi's Dash Corner. Find us on Twitter at Kenobi's Corner. Uh, we're on iTunes and Google Play Store uh, in the podcast sections for both. Just look up Kenobi's Corner. You should find us pretty easily. Uh, if you have any suggestions for the show, any uh, hints for the show, want to tell us how great Ghost in the Shell is, uh, what do you think about the movie coming up, especially because we don't know a whole lot about the subject, uh, mm-hmm. please send us a tweet. Um, drop us a comment on SoundCloud. Drop us a, a review on iTunes if you like the show. If you don't like the show, then comment contact us on twitter and tell yeah. us you don't like the show or if and, you want uh, to hang out drop a location free to pin. still drop a review but let us know so that way you, we can correct these things yeah. uh, i'm sorry what did you say i was talking over you <laughs> or if you just want to hang out drop a location pin and we'll find you <laughs> we'll uh, come we'll come hunt you down we'll come hunt you down <laughs> but uh yeah thanks everybody for coming in and hanging out with us uh you'll have a great and safe thanksgiving if have uh, time with the fam enjoy your eggnog and turkey yeah don't fall asleep too much or but maybe asleep. take a few naps. Yeah. That'll be all right. And go check out Arrival and Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Yeah, and we'll talk about that next week. Yes, you will. We can, you can uh, enjoy your turkey leftovers while you're listening to us talk about yeah. Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. So hopefully you enjoy yourselves and each other. Yeah.